Hello, my name is Robert Morey. I'm an artist in Louisville, Kentucky, and um, a political prisoner, but I'll be getting to that later. I've made hundreds of original discoveries in polyhedral configuration science, if you will, mathematics, and modeled them in a form such as you see here before you. Um, these, I call myself a psychic genius, and it's a bizarre origin of uh, all of these works that you will eventually see if I become the channel I hope to show and tell. Um, I'm a poor guy. I'm an unsuccessful artist. Even though you're looking at one of dozens of pieces of work that I think should be valued in the millions of dollars, uh, simply because it's unexampled on earth. It, it works. It it could become jewelry, you know, it could become a sculpture in a, uh, on a campus, etc. Um, and, well, let's see, I was drug raped in the middle 80s, and I lost my memory for a dozen years. And I didn't even know how I'd come to be in the state I had been. It was 12 years before I remembered that I was drug raped. And um, so a lot of time passed between that event and, and subsequent uh, uh, events, developments. Um, when I woke up, I almost was, was dead, and, and I may have been dead, and I don't know how long I was out, but uh, I, I couldn't drink water, I discovered. That was the first thing I did when I was able to pull myself out of bed, was try to drink water, and I gagged on the water, couldn't do it. Somehow, I... I survived and could get some water down. I had a, a sore in my throat, a, a, a whelp a, in the larynx uh, for like a month. But um, I realized because I couldn't spell or read or uh, my uh, speak clearly that um, I was a failure. I'm going to be a failure. I didn't even know my name's pronunciation when I found my wallet. I couldn't pronounce my name properly. Um, well, let's see. I decided then um, that I was going to follow my bliss because I was not going to amount to anything professional. And uh, I'm going to become an artist. I always wanted to be an artist. And my bliss would be polyhedral space configurations, tessellations, polygons. These are the things that I really admired. But since my math skills were never good, really great, I wouldn't go in that path. I wanted to become an, a writer, an author. And um, so, uh, and by the way, you can find uh, my haiku, which is a breakthrough in poetry, on my page, at Robert Morey 123 on Facebook. Um, I've written maybe 5,000 exactly 17-syllable three-line uh, haiku. And uh, it's, it's really a fresh idea in poetry, uh, allowing all sorts of things to be expressed. And, uh, and I hope that you will uh, appreciate uh, that effort if you find it on the page. But there are dozens of albums on my page at Robert Morey 123, uh, where you see these polyhedral structures, you see also bounded space drawings. You'll find ink bubble abstract art. And these are all um, excellent uh, works. Uh, my skills are uh, top notch. Uh, I invented, by the way, this thing called bounded space drawing. And the black and white image you see behind uh, the polyhedron here is um, one of these uh, bounded space drawings, which was a breakthrough in mathematics and art. It started with the discovery that the nodes plus the cells minus one um, holds for all uh, juxtapositions of circuits and that all juxtapositions of circuits, circles, uh, squiggles, whatever, that close space, one on top of the other, is a two-color map in exactly one way. And I worked out all the rules for um, uh, coloring these of uh, abstract uh, drawings, and I made 300 of them. Uh, they're eight and a half uh, by 11 
uh, on cardstock, 40 pound, and um, uh, 2,500 hours of my life went into the bounded space drawing effort. And another 1,500 went into the um, ink bubble abstract art, and maybe 5,000 hours have gone into the polyhedrons. So, I mean, my life has been well spent, and I've constantly busied myself doing these things. Um, so, now, this object in front of you um, is a, a cellularization. There are five cells um, that are identical that unite to make this pentagonal starry uh, event. And this uh, uh, is also a cell, so five Subcells make the big cell. Twelve more of them would fit together in a great big polyhedron that would be like ten foot in diameter. Um, and these edges are one inch. Taking that out of the way, and also I want to show you that you know this is another way it sits on its on its side. It can sit on its side. And I'll just take that out of the way, and I'll have many of these to share with you in the future. Many more of them. Um, but right now I want to talk about um, this big metal dinosaur tooth looking thing here in the center that you can see is metallic because it's got that uh, magnet stuck to the top, the telescoping magnet. And um, it's a really rare uh, uh, creation uh, in the world. And I'm wondering if anyone else can find one because I saw it happen. And so uh, we'll be able to decide that this is a recurring phenomenon. Uh, but I lived around Frankfurt Avenue around 2001 um, in these apartments on Frankfurt Avenue um, next to um, the, the funeral home near the Walgreens. And there was a train traveling by. It had uh, a bunch of metal scraps in it. It was an open car. And, and some of these metal scraps had, uh, had become uh, they, they went over the back of the car and under the wheel so that a sort of conveyor belt had been established. And these metal strips were being sucked uh, under the, uh, the car and the wheel had become red hot and was glowing red hot. And this, this was forming behind the wheel and it fell off. So um, the next day I went and I, and I picked it up I'd like to show you the underside of it, but it's 20 pounds, and the underside is, is, is soft uh, and shows the impression of the metal uh, uh, wheel. Now, these objects in front are even more miraculous related to uh, the railroad. Um, they are fulgurites of railroad spikes, and I saw this happen too. I'm a witness of bizarre events, and I am a psychic genius who has been channeling all kinds of new math knowledge when he has like no uh, business doing so, no precedent for it, no, uh, there was no way to anticipate or expect anything like this from me. Well, anyway, uh, let's look at one of these railroad spikes. Um, now you can see there's the flat side. That indention was the top of the railroad spike. And um, it's been turned inside out, and it's, it's no longer magnetic. It was a, a little bit magnetic, but no longer. Uh, and it's totally crystalline, and I think it's uh, industrial diamonds. I could just cut the glass with, the, with one of these edges right there. And um, can, we, can we get in here close and maybe see some of this? All this is being done here, this with a with a um, Samsung tablet that's the the camera here nothing really fancy or technologically uh, impressive and uh, so you'll notice also that it stands like that at an angle um, there's a an iridescent uh, a sort of purplish color in all these little little diamonds. Well, this was once metal, right? As I was telling you. And how it happened is that the workmen uh, were working on the, uh, the railroad track, and uh, this was behind a 
partition that they set up so you couldn't see. But I happened to pass by on foot coming up from Kroger's and, and saw them chumming this metal uh, pot with railroad spikes. They were throwing uh, into a hole on the ground that was full of molten metal uh, railroad spikes. And then suddenly a storm kicked up and they had to take off. Uh, and then from my uh, window on Frankfurt Avenue, my apartment window, I saw lightning strike this hot pot of metal where they had thrown in the spikes. And uh, the next day I went and collected these and I have still more of these. So um, it's really, those are really bizarre. Um, now, talk about crazy, crazy, crazy. There's this. First of all, I mean, the precarious balance of the structure, like that other one, the star would stand that entire structure on three little points. This uh, structure, totally tetrahedral, is standing on edges, three edges of tetrahedrons, the edges. Um, as, now, the most important discovery, perhaps, uh, that I have made, and perhaps that has ever been made, is this pentagonal configuration of 40 tetrahedrons that make the head of this little man thing, okay? I'm saying that this is the first of an infinite series of concatenations of polyhedrons, this case tetrahedrons, and um, this is the n equals 1, and it's 40 tetrahedrons. So if you're really skilled, you can go now and put 40 tetrahedrons together to make this pentagonal configuration. It's also expandable infinitely uh, with the intercalation of a certain amount of, of additional tetrahedrons. Well, um, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the natural numbers, the counting numbers, and these configurations so that there is a unique configuration for every number, and every configuration is unique and different, like the numbers themselves. Um, and I will share, I found, for example, uh, uh, that um, one of these configurations, I think it's my n equals um, uh, 4, uh, which has 100 uh, tetrahedrons, that it's stackable, that the this ring of 100 tetrahedrons, um, which... Um, is a little bit decagonal in its uh, orientation or aspect. It's stackable. It, it presents five flat um, uh, equilateral triangles front and back so that you can stack them and rotate them and all this stuff. Um, it's a huge idea, I mean, but I'm telling you, it, it, I've made the first eight of these, N through N1 through eight, and you know I only have infinity to go now, right? Um, now the structure in the, the the in the very back here, you see this black and white image, that picture there. It's, it's boxed by me. It's one of my bounded space drawings, and um, it's um, uh, laminated, and I've got it in this frame, and and. Uh, I don't have a lot of time left to, to, well, on this video, so I'm going to have to cut it short. You've got to go to Robert Morey, at Robert Morey123, and see the Bound of Space drawings. I'm going to have to leave this now and come back to the rest of this to talk, because I now see I've got 14 minutes past, and I just don't have more time or energy for that. So I'll bid you adieu, and we'll get back to this next time. Thanks. Bye.